My friend, get ready for what I think will be one of the most interesting presentations that I've had the honor of providing to you heretofore. And it will deal with a number of things. First, three reasons why America will reject President Biden and these horror mavens come November. Number two, three reasons why Fannie Willis, Fannie, will be either disbarred or behind bars, one of the two or both. And this is also important. What is happening right now involving the courts and gag orders and 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 so much. So get ready. Let me see if I can get through this because I have so much to say and so little time. My friends, first, as we begin, let me say to you right now, listen to me carefully. Please, I ask, I beg, I beseech, I importune you to make sure that you are subscribed here, subscribed. You might think you are, but sometimes I'm hearing from people that they're unsubscribed for reasons I don't know. So make sure. Number two, you must like this video. You must hit the like. You must hit the like repeatedly. I'm telling you, it's critical that you do that. Number three, you must hit that little bell, that little notification so that you are told, so that you are made aware of when new videos and the like are presented. Okay? Now, before we get into one of the most important presentations of my illustrious career and our friendship, one of the most important messages I have, and I'm still telling you, and I have always said it, there are terrible things that are on the horizon. You know it and I know it. I don't know what these people are going to do. I don't know what's going to happen or why. We can guess all day long. But one of these days you're going to find out that the three things that we need the most, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they took the last train for the coast, is, of course, food, water, and energy. As to the subject of food and emergency food, listen very carefully to this. Let's talk about a very serious subject, emergency food. That's right, emergency food. Now, I know at first blush, it's difficult for most people to think about something that they just, just take for granted, ever reaching, you know, emergency status. We're used to stores always being open, deliveries always made, no supply chain disasters, no, no ransomware catastrophes, you know, shutting down gas stations, no trucking strikes, no war, no protests from farmers, no mysterious Chinese weather balloons, nothing, nothing catastrophic in terms of weather. Well, that can't happen to us, right? And I understand it's a defense mechanism that we have because the idea of ever not being able to eat or locate food is seemingly incomprehensible to most people. But think about this. It's not. That's why it's time for you to go to my site, preparewithlionel.com. Preparewithlionel.com has the deal of deals for you. Take it as a, as a starter set, an introduction set. You've been putting off emergency food for too long. Some people still have a thing about prepping as though prepping for emergency is foolish. Now, right now, you can save $200 on a three-month emergency supply kit. This is unbelievable. 22 varieties with a 25-year shelf life, 25 years, 2,000 calories a day in six rugged buckets, 120 pounds of food. Could you go three months, 90 days if stores closed? Be honest. Could you go a week without any trips to the store? I don't think so. I'm not talking about having stuff in your cabinet. I'm not talking about banana chips and jerky. I'm talking about food, real food. So go right now to preparewithlionel.com. This moment right now, preparewithlionel.com, preparewithlionel.com. Go now and thank me later. By the way, welcome Susan Marchiafava, our new member. Also, one more thing, and then we're going to get down to business. Make sure you all also put down... Subscribe to Lionel Legal because we're going to be doing, we're going to be spreading this. We're going to have almost like a Lionel, a Lionel Law School, as it were. Now, let's get down to brass tacks. And first, I want to talk to you about Fannie Willis. And I want you to understand why Fannie Willis is important and what you should know about this. And more importantly, I want you to know what you need to know so that when you go out and you talk to your friends, you'll be able to converse with them lucidly. And you'll know exactly what to say. Number one, 
Number one, there are three, I think four, but three reasons which I, I just provided to you in the current video, the current video, but there are three reasons, actually four, but there are three reasons that, that uh, Fannie Willis is looking at not only perhaps disbarment, but being behind bars. That may sound a bit nutty to you, may sound a bit wacky, but let me explain to you. Number one, perjury. Perjury, as you know, is a lie. It's also an inconsistent statement. It's a misrepresentation. It is a it is a lie. It is a it is a fib, whatever you want to call it, under oath. And that's the most important. It's a it's a lie, misrepresentation of fact, under oath, deliberately, intentionally. And more importantly, it's to a material issue in fact. Now, this is a really critical thing. To a material issue in fact. What does that mean? Good question. During the course of this, I told you right off the bat, and by the way, here's the link for you to, to watch the latest video. I told you from the very beginning that there is no basis to disqualify Fannie Willis because Nathan Wade is her chief assistant or special assistant or whatever, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Okay. I told you that. I still believe that. Why do I say that? Because there are two bases for disqualification. Conflict of interest and actual um, forensic corruption, forensic malpractice, doing something by uh, uh, using false fingerprints or something. That, that's, that's not the case. Conflict of interest. Is there a conflict of interest? No. No. Why do I say this? Fannie Willis could have been married to Nathan Wade. She could have been married to him. And that would not have uh, been enough to remove her. Now, if you can be married to somebody, you can certainly be dating them, stopping them, doing whatever you want. Do you hear what I'm saying? That there is no the, <clears throat> the standard is does she have does she have a stake in the case? No. None. None. So everything's fine, right? No. And I told you before. Fanny Willis could have very easily said, "Oh, by the way, your honor, Judge McAfee, I'm having an affair with Mr. Mr. Uh, Edu, Edu, Mr. Um, um, Mr. Wade. I hired him precisely because we are having an affair. I also hired him because, because as I hire him, I expect him to wine and dine me. So I guess, yeah, you know. But that has nothing to do with the prosecution of the case. Nothing. Nothing. A grand jury listened to the facts of the case. A grand jury rendered a true bill. President Trump is charged with uh, with uh, um, uh, racketeering, and that's it. Now, 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 you may you may think, well, that's unethical. It could very well be. There might be some nepotism law or something that may or may not, but it does not in any way indicate a problem and does not necessitate or, or, or require her removal. But here's when it changed. When they started to have the hearing, when they started the motions with Ashley Merchant, you have Judge Mershon or Merchant and Judge Merchant. And by the way, you can tell the the, the the sloppiness I'm seeing in articles. And I don't I don't know if it's dictation or if it's AI or whatever. And the Daily Mail is just with peer in terms of the degree of errors that I am seeing. Oh, in any event, everything changed when they said, when did your relationship begin? 2022. That's the lie. That's it. That's it. Perjury. Perjury. But that's not relevant. It is now. Not when you're under oath. Not when you're under oath. 
Not when you're under oath. Not when it becomes a material issue in fact. You lied, you lied, you lied, you lied, you lied. And they came, oh my God, remember her friend, I forget her name, was the, the one that she sublet, she testified, uh, 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 Bradley, I mean, every, everybody, no. And by the way, there are other still whistleblowers here you haven't even heard from. She lied, and he lied. Forget about Wade, Wade lied, she lied, but she lied. Perjury, number one. Number two, this really gets serious. Obstruction of justice and witness tampering. What? That's right. Cindy Lee Yeager. Remember this? She said, I was talking. Boy, this guy was getting around there. Mr. Wade was all of a sudden, me, sorry, Mr. Bradley, all of a sudden was in the office in Cobb County. Now, uh, Cindy Lee is the assistant chief deputy prosecutor, DA, in the office of. Um, the Cobb County DA. She's like the 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 second in command. There's, I think, two of them. For some reason, either she overheard it, what's his name, uh, Bradley told her, or whatever. She said she heard Fanny say, "You know they're after us, us, and you don't have to tell them about us." What was that? You don't have to tell them about us. Oh, right? Understand? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand. Right. I thought you'd understand that. Oh, yes, 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 I understand. Yes, yes, yes. I see. I see. So, uh, you know, yeah, okay, okay, okay. So I should, oh, I didn't say that. I'm just saying uh, you might want to, you know. That's number one. Number two, Nathan, Nathan Wade says, you know that stuff we talked about is privileged. Now, he's, is he aiding and abetting? Is there a conspiracy to commit witness to obstruction? I don't know, could be. I think the case could be made. Think like a Fed, think like a Fed. And then Mr. Banks later on, I believe, who represents the 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 uh, law partner of of Mr. Mr. Wade, said to Mr. Bradley, "Now you know." Oh no, he said, "Are you are you the leak?" So there's three in a row, and I think the argument can be made that there's kind of like a conspiracy. Okay, so now you've got perjury, number one, obstruction of justice, a witness tampering. I'll throw those two together, and the third reason is that there are strict rules regarding what a prosecutor can and can't do. And number four, the Julia Four, especially in view of the fact that the judge told her, don't do this. What do I mean? Let me explain. If I'm a prosecutor, let's say I am prosecuting Lizzie Sola. I know that it's crazy. Liz, I'm prosecuting. And Liz is thinking, Okay, and I, on my own, when I receive an award, when I go to a, a black church, let's assume I'm a black, and I say, and as a black woman, as a black woman who was filling the son of the gun, as a the black woman, Liz Zolak will not understand the justice. And you think, wait a minute, what? What does this all have to do with this woman who's a black? What? What are, what are you talking about? And I, in the pursuit of justice, am not going to let people get in the way. A black proud woman. Is Liz getting in the way of, I know, I'm not saying that. Well, why are you saying it? Because I'm Fanny Willis. I can say whatever I want. And you're thinking, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Aside from poisoning the pool, what are you what are you asking people to do now? What are you asking them to do? Tell me again. Explain this one to me. I don't get it. I'm not sure. What are you saying? What are you claiming? You want us now to go out and what? Find her guilty because of the race and the... Now, the way you should normally do it, prosecutors, and they do it here in the Southern District of New York, the, the current uh, attorney... Um, 
uh, the current uh, U.S. attorney, I forget his name, is very good. When Sam Bankman Freed was indicted, he came out and he said, grand jury returned a true bill. This is what he's charged with. Uh, this is it. And that's it. And have a nice day. Boom. That's it. End of discussion. And was it about me as a black man, a black woman? No. And she did it again. And she says, I'm going to do it anyway. And they told me not to do it. So that's contempt of court. I don't know why I said three. It was like six. Contempt of court. And also the judicial canons, the rules, the regulations regarding this. Okay. That's it. Next. I am finding myself today changing everything regarding so many people. I, 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 I cannot believe that the people that I used to think were, eh. I told you who I think would be really not, I think it'd be very, very good. Who I think would be excellent as a as a as a uh, vice president. Forget forget um, forget um, Ben Carson. Uh, Elise Stefanik. I like more and more what I'm seeing. She got off that that Harvard Claudine Gay thing, which would drive me crazy. Remember in February and uh, December of last year, she filed a complaint against a federal judge who ruled in the January 6th case. He was talking, basically suggesting that he had committed a barrel howl. And apparently claimed that U.S. District Judge Beryl Howell engaged in judicial misconduct during a speech she gave last month after accepting an award at a Women's White Collar Defense Association. Stephan called it a highly inappropriate political speech. In this speech, Beryl Howell discussed the impact of big lies in connection with the October, the January 6th uh, Capitol Hill attack and quoted historian Heather Cox Richardson's book, Democracy Awakening, that big lies are springboards for authoritarians. Eh. At least Stephanie, good for her. Next. There's a group of people, a new group called the Article 3 group. I like this. The Article 3 project. They filed a 13-page complaint against Judge Reggie Walton of the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. This is one, the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. This is the, this is the premier farm team. This is one step below the Supreme Court. But because they're in D.C., in many respects, a lot of people came. Scalia was from there. I think um, Kavanaugh. It's the springboard. It's the best of the best of the best. And Reggie Walton apparently was saying some stuff about Judge Merchant. And he said, quote, it is troubling. This is because the supposed threats against judges it is troubling because I think it is an attack on the rule of law when judges are threatened and particularly when their family is threatened and it's something that's wrong and should not happen. Nobody threatened Judge Merchant, Merchant. Nobody ever, ever threatened him, his daughter, his family, or anyone. Do you hear what I am saying to you? Let me make this very clear. Let me make this very clear. Nobody, but nobody, is threatening the judge or his family. Period. And you cannot tell a man on trial for his life that he can't say, wait a minute. Because today, whether you like it or not, social media... And I think you know this. I think Nick knows this. I think Sue knows this. I think Flat Earth. I think Johnny Pittman. I think everybody knows this. I think you know this. Social media today are your, this is your uh, town square. This is your bullhorn. This is your public forum. 
And what President Trump is saying is, how can you char- how can you expect me to not say anything when the daughter? I'm not saying anything about the daughter. I'm not. I'm not saying she's ugly or or give her a hard time. I'm showing you she is actively involved in this. Oh, I forget the name of the group, but it's on her LinkedIn or whatever. You know, this LinkedIn is really important. I have no use to it for it. But LinkedIn, to some people, that's all they use is LinkedIn. In any event, she basically is a part of the, I think they're based out of Chicago. It's a, it's an active pro-democratic uh, platform that basically is counter, not only counterproductive, but 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 in essence, designed and configured to go after Trump and and his type and his party and the, and the whole the whole bit. It's unbelievable. And what President Trump did was said, "Wait a minute, hold it, hold it. This isn't fair." And I give the impression of the or the example of this. Let's say that you have a Jewish man. I'm saying this again who's on trial, defendant, charged with the... And this Jewish man has the judge and the judge's wife, the judge's husband, the judge's son is a head of some Aryan group. And that's not against the law, by the way. Don't forget Skokie, okay? A black man is on trial. He's a defendant. And the husband or the wife or the son with the daughter of the judge is the grand cyclops of the Ku Klux Klan. It's not against the law. It's not. You don't think that that you you don't think that that ju- that that defendant can say, "Hey, wait a minute. What is this? There you go, threatening. I'm not threatening anybody. I'm the one being threatened. I want a fair trial. I want a level playing field." And you, judge, have to make sure and ensure that there's a level playing field here. How dare you do this? And how dare you tell me that I'm threatening people? And then this judge, Reggie, gets up there and says, yeah, they're threatening them. Nobody's threatening anybody. You see what these bastards do is they get on a kick and they stick to it. They stick to it. They stick no matter how stupid it is. Like this January 6th business. This country was never in any way threatened with anything. Nothing. This country never was in any way threatened by anything or anyone on that day. Nothing. Don't even make me laugh. You've got to be kidding me. You think those people threatened and actually pose a substantial threat to these United States, are you out of your mind? You're you're kidding me. You're kidding me. Joe Biden, and I think I posted this, Joe Biden in an interview said, let me tell, tell all you crazy Second Amendment people, you and your guns, if you think, if you think that somehow you're going to be able to defend yourself against this government with your guns. I don't care what you've got. You need F-15s. You need nuclear weapons. You need tanks. You, you don't have enough to that. You don't have that. Oh, really? So what you're saying, Joe, so what you're saying, let me get this straight. You're saying that you would need tanks. You're welcome. You would need tanks and F-15s and firepower that average citizens have in order to pose a substantial threat to this. Yes. Well, there goes your argument is January 6th. Because if you think some guy with a, with a beer belly and some eye patch, some guy walking around with a Valkyrie helmet, being led into the Capitol, you're, think, you're telling me those people posed a threat to the country? Not trespassers. Not pose an immediate threat to people who happen to be there. But to the country? What's it going to be, Joe? Were you lying then or are you lying now? And that's one of the reasons why people are tired of this bullshit because they've had it. Americans are tired. They have heard it. They are saying, it's time for us to vote. I'm not saying anything, but I'm going to go in there and I don't know who it is, but I am not. I am not voting for this guy. And let me tell you something. Bobby Kennedy, if he does one thing, 
They, they tend to be arguing from whom he will poach votes. Will it be Trump? Will it be Democrats? I don't know. I think, I think most people, see what they're trying to do is they're saying, well, um, he tends to be very pro-Israel and he is pro, um, or is it anti-vaxxer, they're saying. And that tends to be more right-wing. I don't know. His vice president is an ex-head of Google. Does these sound like right-wingers to you? I don't think so. So what I'm saying, dear friends, are feel good. Feel good. And you better hit that like button. Listen to Lizzie. Listen to Solak. Don't make, don't make her mad. You don't want to see this. You don't want to see this. Let's take a quick interruption right now and talk to our great friend. You know him, you love him from parts unknown, way to unknown. Number 15 in your program, number one in your heart, the lovely, the talented, the inimitable, the ineffable, Mr. Mike Lindell and MyPillow.com, promo code Lionel. Well, it's time yet again to hail and salute our great friends at MyPillow.com. And if you use promo code Lionel, you get a free gift. No purchase necessary. I know, I know, a free gift. Gifts are free. Okay, it's a tautology, so sue me. But listen to me and listen carefully. What are we talking about here? Down comforters, flannel sheets, Giza Dream bed sheets, my pillow 2.0, body pillows, waffle blankets, couch and recliner pillows, sheets, slippers, percales. I'm not even done yet. Towels, quilts, bedspreads, mattresses, mattress covers, mattress toppers, linens, kitchen towels, bathrobes, pet blankets, pet blankets, bolster pillows, name it. Items to help you luxuriate and relax. And they're monster sellers, slippers, my slippers, slip-ons, moccasins. Think about it. What do they do at my pillow? What's their main goal? To make things real soft, plush, real comfy, comfy, or comfy as I say it. How perfect. So here's the link right now. Go to mypillow.com slash Lionel. Mypillow.com, promo code Lionel or slash Lionel, or call 800-645-4965. 800 645 4965. And watch how fast our good friend Mike Lindell answers the phone. MyPillow.com, promo code Lionel, simply and absolutely the best. All right, dear friends, right now we're looking at this. We're looking at, believe it or not, 207 likes, thanks to you. And I want to thank you for this. I, I'm serious. I, I thank you. We keep saying all the time, all the time, thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean it. Thank you. Because we're all in this together, brother. Don't forget the great Cam Fong is Chin Ho. Remember Hawaii Five-0? Chin Ho Kelly? We're all in this together, brother. I love that line. We also lost Joe Flaherty from SCTV. So thank you for this. And thank you for following Mrs. L. Oh, God, she's got some great stuff. Now, you do know, by the way, tomorrow morning, I'm going to be doing the Lionel legal in the morning. So you got to sign up for that too. Just like this. It's no big deal. We just go over there. I want this to be, I, I want to make legal stuff in particular understandable. That's all. Because it's really not, it's, it's, it's talked about in this kind of, um, I was listening to somebody kind of on my YouTube circuit. I'm not going to mention the name, but it's a very famous name. And I'm listening to him talk, and I'm thinking, I don't, that's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. There's a lot about this business that we deal with in terms of law. That's just nuts. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just trying to explain it. I'm explaining it to you. That's all. Now, let's talk about some other things too. I mentioned this before. Please tell me you have seen Tiffany Henyard. You can't believe what you're seeing. From Dalton, Illinois, 40 years old, the most corrupt, the most, uh, I, you, you just listen to her and you'll think, Mayor? Oh, yeah. Mayor? 
She's a black woman. This isn't DEI. They voted for her. There's no DEI. That's like they're doing that with that with, with that that uh, uh, um, Baltimore mayor. Oh, by the way, anybody? We're all done talking about the Baltimore Bridge. You notice that? Shh. Move along. What? Nothing to see here. What? Shut up. Shut up. You heard me. That's what they're telling you. They're saying, shut up. We're not talking about this anymore. We don't care what you have to say about this anymore. We're done talking about it. Yeah, well, I'm not done. Well, we're done. I've been through this before. I've been through this. I've been through this, see? I've been around. You know who else we're done talking about? Kate. Kate Middleton. Next. Is she alive? Move along. This is something which is incredible. With all this information, you say, where do I go? I don't know. How about Diddy? Shut up. Move along. Wait a minute. You went in with the 82nd Airborne. What about him? I don't know. Are they going to charge him? Maybe. Move along. We need to have a thing called follow-up TV. I told you about this thing. If I had a TV show, I would have this woman named Madge. And Madge would come out wearing a muumu and slippers and uh, like a house dress. And she would put out little, little post-it notes, Baltimore, right, uh, Kate Middleton, um, Diddy, and what? just watch all these stories. Let me ask you something. What was a story that you were interested in that just went away? Remember the Lahaina fire? <laughs> East Palestine. Next. She's never talking about it again. Another. Northern Carolina fire. I mean, California fire. Nothing. How about the earthquake? How about the earthquake? All of a sudden, that was a mother near Taiwan. Interesting. Interesting. The fake. Look at Johnny Pittman. The fake uh, fake moon story. The fake moon story? I don't know what that was. <laughs> I don't know what a fake moon is, fake landing. How about the white balloons? The Uyghurs? Just gone. Nothing. Squirrel. Nikki's got it right. This is the most, the, the, these stories that happen one day and then they're just gone. What's your think about this one? It's it's the most incredible thing I've ever seen. It's like we're saying we're not done with this yet. And I wish one day somebody like Fox News, if you can put up with this, not oh my god, Fox News is just dear God, it's so horrible. The remember, remember the rabbit <clears throat> that attacked the crazy rabbit that attacked Jimmy Carter one time in the boat. Remember that one? They they covered that one more than this. There, there's just these. Someone writes, natural earthquakes, thousands every year. Let me ask you something. Of course there's natural earthquakes. Do you believe it is possible to, let me ask you something. It is within the realm of, of, of logic. Do you believe it is within the realm of logic to initiate to weaponize <clears throat> an earthquake? Do you believe that? Let me ask you a question. Do you think that's possible? Am I just making this stuff up? Do you think it is possible? Do you believe it is possible? I am asking you this again. For there to be the weaponization, hear me out, the weaponization of earthquakes configured and, and situated right over some integral tectonic juncture, some focus or foci blasted with some Tesla waves. I don't even know what the hell that is. And they get this, and all of a sudden out there in the middle of nowhere, there's a little, you get this. And what do you get next? The tsunami. Here it comes. And it's just, 
<clears throat> it's very, it's like, have you ever been, do you ever see when, when the tide goes out? Next time you're in a tub, I don't do tubs, I do showers, but if you're in a tub and you <clears throat> sh sh shift your weight, do you ever do that where all of a sudden the water goes this way and then it comes back? That's what that is. Do you think it's possible? Do you think it's possible? I don't. I don't think I'm going to say there is. I'm not going to suggest immediately that that's what happened. I have no reason to believe that. Is it possible? Damn right it's possible. Do you remember something very interesting, dear friend? Do you remember something very interesting? And I quoted it this morning. And it's very simple. In April of 1997, U.S. Secretary of Defense William Cohen declared that there are terrorists at work who, and I quote, are engaging even in an eco type of terrorism whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic forces. Okay. Alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely. This is the Secretary of Defense. This isn't Alex Jones, the Secretary of defense. Can you imagine if I would say, I got something that's so terrific. I've got a weapon that everybody, mankind has been wanting to use this weapon since, since the beginning of time. In China, they see the clouds. You know it and I know it. That's what they do. In China, they do. Operation Popeye in Vietnam. Remember that? Oh, yes, my friends. Global uh, geoengineering. Are you aware of that? Of course you are. Geoengineering. Don't call them chemtrails. What I want you to do is I want you to balance the. How do I say this? I want you to balance the. Um, the possibility of something. With the reality of something. Just because something's possible doesn't mean that. You're going to have to, listen to me, you're going to have to expand your brain around concepts that are so wild and so great that it'll make your head spin. Do you know what AI is going to do? AI and AGI? Oh. I still haven't been able to. I feel very, very bad about that because I'm not, I've not been able to explain that one to you because people don't really get it. They're thinking about robots or something. You know? You're going to have to think in ways and think in terms that are so incredible that uh, it'll blow your mind. Blow your mind. I'm telling you right now. We are a rare breed, all of us. You know that? We are a rare breed. While these folks on TV are doing their usual stuff, we're going a little bit deeper. <clears throat> I want to know where Cat Williams is. Where is he? Is he okay? Is Cat Williams okay? Is he a part of this? Is Cat with us? Is he okay? Is somebody going to check on him? Is he going to do this? Anybody? Anybody? Is he part of this? Because let me tell you something right now. There's there's a lot of stuff going on. There is right now people, there are people so scared over what this thing means. And I'm and I'm telling you, do you think anybody on Fox? I I, I keep talking about Fox News because I saw this thing this morning with these these this idiot level has gone through the roof. It is beyond stupid. It is so submental. It is so pedestrian. I also noticed something. Have you noticed? See, this is what I do. This is the thing. Do you notice something? Have you noticed that? And please tell me, maybe I'm wrong because I don't really follow him. Have you noticed that Tucker Carlson's kind of been like weak? That there's no 
Remember when he came out, he was like, gangbusters. You notice how it's like, weak. Anybody notice this? Anybody? It was just like sort of, lately, it's like, oh, it's interesting. He's got a good one. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. At first, there was a sense of, did you see it? Did you see what he had to say? It was a sense of, of, uh, of weight to it. You notice that? I don't see this now. I don't see it. I don't feel this. Have you noticed this? It, it is strange. Remember when the whole, the whole, what am I saying? The, the uh, Candace Owens thing? I'm seeing something. I'm wondering if we, because let, 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 me, let me explain this. As you know, habituation is the thing you want to avoid at all costs. You make, you, 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 you want to avoid when something becomes so repetitive, you become so used to something. Like there's a whole bunch of people, I just don't, they don't really have that oomph anymore. To maintain that level, the first thing is to be over. Uh, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is smart because he hits so many. You don't know what he's going to He'll talk about UFOs one day. He'll talk about aliens and they talk about uh, uh, getting high and boxing and UFC. And you never, you never know what he's going to do. Joe Rogan is a version of the um, variety show. Very smart. Very, very smart. He's a he's a version of this thing that is so interesting. He's this, he's this, he's like nothing I've ever seen before. Nothing. Nothing. I've never seen anything like this before. Lex Friedman. I love that guy. I I I mean, I just if there's one thing that makes me happy. Anybody who can sit around and have Eric Weinstein and uh, Penrose and others talk about singularity and uh, gravitational quantum gravity. I mean, just this is one of the, there's hope. I'm serious. There's hope for us. You would never see any of these people on Fox News. Fox News is the, the frozen TV. It's the Swanson frozen TV of food. It'll get the job done, but not the fact. Very predictable. You peel back the foil. Oh, yeah, those little carrots. Yeah, that's it. Oh, look at this chicken. I guess that's right. That's Fox News. It's just, it's this relic. It's this star that burned out years ago. And you think you still see it, but it's not there anymore. It's dead. It's gone. And they're using their B, C, D. They, there's just no, it's the same people over and over again. Very simple issues. Very simple issues. There's no... And I think one of the reasons, a couple of things. I think when Tucker left, and yet I think he didn't have the right focus. He didn't think this one through. Also, are you noticing what's happening to Elon Musk? Do you believe what you're hearing regarding Elon Musk? Uh, Horace Pringle says, Lionel, after hearing your exhortations vis-a-vis -vis food and lifestyle, I went Whole Foods on March uh, the 1st. I've lost 17 pounds and I feel so much better. No more edema or pins and needles. Thank you forever. Thank you. When you say pins and needles, you mean like a neuropathy? Or is that spilkus? That's kind of like the neuropathy. Edema is, oh, that makes my that makes my day. Horace, I thank you. And I wish you people would be so but you have I I I I don't want to ever proselytize. You would feel, do you agree, Horace? You would feel so much better if people could just eat. I mean, really eat, taste food again. I'm not talking about eating. You don't know how good you feel. You don't know. And I know, and you're talking to somebody, by the way, oh, circulatory issues gone. Isn't that something? That blows me away. 
Horace, make sure you find you. Um, let me give you this one too. Uh, nutrition. Um, this is, I think, the best site, bar none. Um, I love Michael Greger. I love nutritionfacts.org. It's the best. And by the way, uh, Horace, do me a favor. Do not tell anybody you're plant-based. Do not ever use the word vegan under any circumstance. Never do it. You think, you think you've seen Trump hate? You will not believe what you hear from people when you talk about plant-based. You, you have no idea. These experts will come out of nowhere and go, well, how are you? And they'll ask you, Horace, well, how do you get your, how do you get your protein? Oh, and I bet you take, you know what's going, you know what's coming. Here we go. Well, how do you get your protein? How do you get, can you get your protein? Are you sure about the protein? Yeah, you don't want to get quashy or core, you know? Okay. You want to get your protein? How do you get your, well, you know, the doctor said you got, meat's good for you. The doctor told, the doctor told me I had, my favorite is, my doctor told me I had to go back and I had to eat meat again. I just, Really? Yeah, yeah. How about this? Uh, how about this, Horace? You know, these vegans, they don't look good. Have you heard this one, Horace? These vegans, they they look sick. Who? Uh, the vegans. How many do you know? Well, I just, you know, they just don't look good. Who? Uh, you don't think the Chinese, Japanese, Indians, you don't think vegetarian, really hardcore vegetarian, you think they, you think they look bad? Are you kidding me? Well, I just say that. Why do you say that? Well, it's like my politics. I just say stuff like that. No, but you got to have your meat, you know, because after all, we're, we're carnivores. See, see, see right here? You got the teeth right there? Yeah, that means you got to be. So uh, believe me. So I'm telling you, Horace, trust me. Just don't tell anybody this. You're going to have to go. You won't have to worry about this. Oh, oh, and by the way, lay off the oils. Now remember, people will say, well, the seed oils. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All oils. What? All. You don't need them. What? Don't even start with me on that one. You, I've lost friends. Oh, man. You have no idea when you talk through this. So whenever you go out someplace and you say, listen, no oil, just tell them I'm allergic. And they'll go crazy. Can you do this without the... How many of you have been to Chinese restaurants and said, couldn't you lay off the MSG? What? This, I forget it, umami. I don't know about you, but one time I had so much so much MSG, my lips were like, what the hell is going on? And by the way, Horace, another thing too, you can always eat any way you want. Any place you go. Any place. In fact, when we go someplace, we go to um, kind of like this, it's like an organization. Whenever they have meals, we always get Basically, veggies or pasta, pasta with pasta, bread, this, great. They make it special. We get hot food. Theirs has been cold and kind of sitting there. It's very interesting. Another thing, too, a little, a little bit of advice. Some of the best places to go to are steakhouses. The sides are phenomenal. They, I could just go and eat everything, but them a little bit special, you know. You don't have to... Uh, asparagus, I love. Cream spinach, maybe you can lose this cream. But it's it's up to you. And by the way, don't get crazy on this. Uh, just, I'm so glad you're feeling better. But just do me a favor. Don't become crazy. And don't become a cloaca. Don't become an asshole. Telling people all the time. You know, always lecturing. I hate that. Eat what you want. Life is short. I want you to free, you eat whatever you want. I'm never going to tell somebody, you know, you don't want to forget it. I hate that. I hate that. Oh my God. The other day, this guy was telling me, well, you know, and he was saying things, I swear to God, I, it was wrong. But I, I you know, what am I, what am I supposed to do? I, 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 I hate that. So anyway, that's it. Now, speaking of restaurants, did you see what happened? Did you see what happened to Jose Andres? 
Did you see what happened to his uh, food, the airstrikes? Have you seen this? World Central Kitchen, he says that Israel deliberately killed seven of his aid workers in Gaza airstrikes. Seven angels killed at the World uh, World Central Kitchen, he writes, in Gaza Monday, were the best of humanity. The Israeli government, this, this is this guy, needs to open up more land routes for food and medicine. It needs to stop killing civilians and aid workers today. It needs to stop the long journey to pe- Do you do you hear this? This was a guy that I despised. And because he was the most anti-Trump person, I mean he was it was it was insanity. He was just like a rabid. He had a restaurant in in uh, in D.C. I think at the Trump Hotel, which was a beautiful place. And he pulled out because it was Trump. He was one of these, and he was a real suck up to the Democrats or whatever it is. I'm very careful here in this country. I'm very careful with friends of mine, especially when it comes to Israel. Very careful. It's one of those ones where I do not think. I think people know more about artificial intelligence than they do what's happening there. They really don't. They don't know. They don't know. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't. But what he did to have the cojones to go against the Biden administration and Blinken, that's, I, I can't believe that. I can't believe what I just heard. I can't believe that. It's the most incredible thing in the world. I'm, I'm telling you. And what's interesting also, which is very, is that, and I want you to remember this, some little lessons of life. Always be able to read, to read, what's going on? Sorry that happens, but that is stupid to drive in with a bag of groceries. Is that what you think happened? Really? Is that what you think happened? You think delivering food is stupid? I don't think you mean that. I think you're just trying to be funny. Sometimes people try to be funny and they don't realize that there's one thing you got to be. is funny. Not saying something you think is, because I've noticed that. Sometimes people don't mean to be, it comes across mean. 33,000 people dead? And you're talking about? I don't think you mean that. I don't think you mean that. There's this kind of a toughness. Like this, I don't care. Nah, whatever. Remember during, I remember there was a time during the, this, this, this just, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was in 2005, I think, it was a a Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC, and women, women were being attacked, women were being brutalized with bayonets and sticks and stakes and knives, and, and they were savagely assaulted. They had internal uh, damage, and they had fistulas, they became incontinent. These poor women were unable to control uh, body functions. They would soil themselves. They became hated. They were cast aside, thrown aside. Get out of here. You're, you're, they would have to go to different villages. I mean, it was horrible. Doctors came over from um, the U.S. and around the uh, uh, world. Uh, they were experts in repairing fistulas that were sometimes women who give birth will have that. In it, it was a weaponization of sexual attack. Quarter of a million, half a million. And I would tell people this. And I said, this is happening now. And I swear to God, the reaction was like, well, you know how these people are. What are you going to do? I said, what do you mean, what are you going to do? Well, what are you going to do? 
And I would say, well, this we're, we're human beings. I know, but look, we're never going to be able to, and this sound familiar? We're never going to be able to, look, I don't have time for that. We've got to worry about what's happening here. Okay. But do you know anything about it? Not really. I don't really have time for that. Can you find that on a map? No. Do you know the history of this? No. But I kind of like, I like the Fox News approach. Fox News will keep you hidden from it. You don't have to uh, to address any of it. And uh, it's sad, but look, it's one of those things. Look, you know how that is. Those people, those the, the terrorists and the whatever, and the, but that's it. And that's that's the way people act. It's just like that. Just like kind of a well, you know. Look, people have the right to defend themselves. And October seventh was horrible. And you know that Hamas is you got you got you got to you got to you got to you know you got to you got to take care of them. You got to put them out of business, right? Right? And okay, let's move on. And that's it. And they'll say something that I remember during world during uh, Vietnam. Remember remember me lie. Cy Hirsch. And people would say, what about that? Look, war is a very, I say, no, 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 excuse me. Do you know what we did to, to innocent women and children? They called it Pinkville. They didn't call it Milai then. They put them in a ditch and they're shooting them. I say, look, it, it's just, it, it was this blood brain barrier. It would not, it would not sink it. And there was always an excuse. There was always a reason for that. There was always a reason. And these were some of the people who were the most, sometimes very, very religious and Christian. They had crosses and they feel, and they, oh, and they cared about their dogs and they care about their, their own kids. And they look at these people and they say, well, they just look, look at them. They're squatting in the field and they got a water buffalo in the backyard and they wear that funny, that, that hat. And the rice patty. I mean, you know, look. You know what it is? It's the systematic dehumanization of people. You relegate them to a different. They're not the same as us, or that part of the world. What are you going to do? You know, they're just. I don't know. That's the way it is. It's not us. It's just you know what we have. We have plenty to. We got plenty in our plate here, right? Right? Don't we? Don't we? We got nothing to do. I'm just. And when it comes to, well, do you know? I mean, sometimes I think my favorite is, do you know that we are so unable to fight a war now? All of our, our munitions, our missiles, our ammo, all that stuff. We're, we're not looking really good right now. Well, come on. No, we're not. We're the U.S. of A. That's that exceptionalism. Now, let me tell you something. Here's my question. What do you think about the Israeli uh, consulate that was directly bombed in Syria? Any thoughts on that? Any uh, thoughts on that one? You know what that means, right? When you attack an embassy. You know what that means, right? I mean, that's, you've attacked the country. What do you think is going to happen with that? Anything? Any, any, any of you, you want to make a joke about that one? Huh? Want to make a joke of that one? Is that funny? It was the Iranian embassy, but it was, but it was, I think it was a consulate that was next to the embassy, but you attacked it. And it, there, there's no doubt about it. This is an act of war. What do you, what do you think we're going to do about that? Anybody think that's funny? Do you, when you see, let me ask you something. When you see, and this is, this is very, I'm very serious about this. When you see an Israeli, an Iranian um, general, he's got a beard, yeah, like Soleimani, you know, they, do you look at them and do you think, those are, I mean, those are generals, but they're not like our generals. I mean, they're generals, but, you know. We kind of underestimate them. We think that those are the Israelis. And Hezbollah, pfft, come on. That's just some ragtag group, right? 
Don't the people think that? They do think that. They're nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. And the Houthis, you ever hear about the Houthis now? Don't hear about them anymore, do you? About the the gate of the gate of what do they call it? The gate of sorrow up and uh to the Red Sea. And then the Suez Canal. You know what they you know you know what they're gonna do with that one, don't you? Oh, oh, let me tell you something. Very serious stuff. Weird objects and antiques says, do you like soups or salad better? Thank you. I appreciate this. Uh, salad. I'm a salad guy. Soups are very interesting, but I always feel like I'm being gypped. Soup kind of fills you up fast. It's like, I don't think that counts. It's like, do you know that in my life, I never had a, I think I had a peanut butter and jelly like once. But I never had, oh, grilled cheese? Never. I mean, I shouldn't say that. That sort of. But to me, it's like you're cheating. It's like give me, you know, sandwich with no meat. You got to have meat on it. You, you No, know, you don't get, what is cheese? Where's the meat? I like what the, who is it? The French have the croc monsieur, you know, it's just a ham sandwich. It's a grill, then the croc madame, and whatever. It's, it's a ham sandwich. But so anyway, I don't want to waste my I don't want to waste my food on a soup. They're okay, but you know. Now what about this? I want you if every year if every year if ever let's see how good your vocabulary is. I want you to come up with every kind of possible name for soup, starting from the thinnest to the thickest. Okay, can you do that? Let's just do this. Let's think of thin. Broth, consomme, right? Maybe you get into gazpacho. Is it okay? It's cold, but it's still thin. You know what I mean? Thin. It's not. Uh, it's just kind of like consomme broth. Um, and then you pick it up a little bit. Soup. Okay, minestrone, which means basically kind of like a hodgepodge. Minestrone is just a just a it's a, a description. Brodo, you know, broth. And then you start picking up. And then we get into the stews. Is that a soup? Chowder. Stoops. Remember that? Stew and a chin? Um Chowder. Stew. Come on, give me some other names. Give me some other names. Like there's this... Um, I can't remember that. Turtle soup. I've never had that. I've never had that. Chili. All right. Yeah, this chili is kind of like it's kind of like a stewish kind of a thing. There's a, kind of like there isn't that kind of a uh, thank you. I've had enough, haven't you? It's been a long day, my friends. Thank you. So weird objects, thank you. And Horace Pringle. Again, my friend, congratulations to you. God bless you. I'm so glad you're feeling better. You made my day. And Susan Marquiafava, thank you for joining us as well. Also remember, dear friends, as I've said to you repeatedly, and I mean this, and I thank you for this, please make sure you follow Mrs. L at Lynn's Warriors. Okay, you got that right there? Just like it says on the screen. And also on YouTube, excuse me, uh, um, Twitter, at Lynn's Warriors underscore. Okay? And tomorrow, my friend, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, I'm going to be at Lionel Legal. Looks just like this. It's just another channel. Looks just like this. You, you, never, you never know the difference. So make sure you sign up for that and you subscribe. All right, dear friends, let me tell you something. Let me thank you. Let me give you a, a clap, a thank you. You are wonderful. You are superb. I thank you so much for your input, for your countenance, for your suggestions, your humor, as weird as it is. I love it. You're demented. You're freaks. It is such an honor to know you. And I mean that sincerely. All right, my friends. See you tomorrow. Have a great night. By the way, today in New York today, it was cold, rainy, dark, miserable, wonderful day to be in. 
reading, and just, and also digging great, great, great music. Listen to some Michael Cleveland and some Johnny Highland. Oh, mm. all right, dear friends, have a great day. Don't ever change the mean that sincerely. Until then, remember the monkey's dead. The show's over. Sue you. Dead, dead.